Hello, hello, hello. What is going on? Welcome to Youth Power Hour. Come on, somebody. How are you doing today? I hope you are excited today to hear the word of the Lord. And I'm going to say welcome once again. All right, my name is Emmanuel Day. I'm so happy to be here. It's a privilege and honor to be here to deliver God's word, to deliver God's word to you. Now listen, uh, go ahead and big up yourselves in the comment. Let us know where you're watching from around the world, be it in the New York City area, or anywhere in our satellite branches, any branch around the world. Hey, listen, maybe you're new here. Go ahead and announce yourself. We want to know who you are and get to know you at a deeper level. So follow us on all our social media platforms. That's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at AOCCNYC, and of course on YouTube at AOCC Winner's House. And also, everyone who is watching, take this time right now to like this video and to share it. Hey, listen, the more you like, the more you share, the more you comment via live or comment in the comment section, the more the YouTube algorithms get the word of faith out there to the entire world. And that is what we want. So go ahead and do that. Like it, comment, share, and really push forth God's word today. Listen, I'm so excited, like I said, uh, to, to bring the word. All right, it's a very, very short, straight to the point word. We're here for a good time, not a long time, in God's presence and power. And I'm really here to encourage you with a message titled, Mislabeled. All right, as you see it there on the screen, the message is titled, Mislabeled. You clicked it, so you already knew what the message was called. Uh, and, and, and truly, I want you to start believing in you. That's, that, that's it. I want you to start believing in the person God created you to be, the, the person he's made you to be. In fact, I want you to believe in the talents God has given you today. And some people have been mislabeled believing they are what they aren't. And before we even get into all that, because I'm ready, I'm ready to go, I'm ready to give it to you, we, of course, are going to pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for your power, for your strength, for your might, God, for working everything in your good grace. We look to you as our Lord and Savior, as our King. God, I just pray that tonight, Lord, that you minister through me, Lord. I pray that your spirit and presence is felt everywhere this is being listened to right now or watch. God, have your way, mighty God. Take all the glory in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And hey, because you believe it as well, go ahead and comment amen. Good. So listen, like I said, uh, we're here for a, a good time, not a long time, all right? And, and I want to end off giving you three tips or three ways or three things that can help you not be mislabeled, to remember your label, to really focus on how God has shaped you in life. And that's towards the end. Uh, but let's go ahead and read this scripture text, which is kind of massive, out uh, of Judges chapter 6. We're going to read 16 verses. Yes, this is Judges chapter 6, verses 1 to 16. And it goes like this. <clears throat> the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, uh, uh, mud raiders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack them, camping in the land and destroying crops as far away as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all the sheep, the goats, the cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes came with their livestock and tent, were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camel, too numerous to count, and they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Then the Israel cried out to the Lord for help. When they cried out to the Lord because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said, this is what the Lord, your God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of, e out of slavery in Egypt. I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all who oppressed you. I drove out your enemies and gave you their land. I told you, I am the Lord your God. You must not worship the gods of the Amorites in those lands which you live, but you have not listened to me. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash, the clan of Abizar. Gideon, son of Joash, was there threshing wheat into the bottom of the winepress to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has, he, uh, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors had told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us up out of Egypt? 
But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go with the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But Lord, Gideon replied, How can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in the whole tribe of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. The Lord said to him, I will be with you, and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting against one man. Now that's a whole lot of scripture, and, but it's such a great text, such a powerful revelatory text in the Word of God. And, and I want to really just go at this straight, up, straight, up, uh, straight ahead, because sometimes a lot of us find ourselves like Gideon. In a season, in a situation, in a circumstance where we're facing giants, where it looks impossible, where things just suck for us. Hey, you may be in some type of bondage or captivity to a stronghold. Something just not, just does not look pretty in your life. In fact, um, you feel like full of fear. Uh, you could be scared. You could be lost. And, and your situation also could have you moving funny in a certain type of way. And, 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 and I really want to bring this short word of encouragement um, because... In a lot of different conversations I've had in this last week, two and a half weeks, I've noticed that there are a lot of people in this point. There, there are a lot of people who find them in a season like Gideon, where they're struggling with their own identity crisis, where you're struggling to believe the label that's on your life. You're, you're, you're struggling to believe what God says about you. In fact, you've even gone to a point where you've missed labeled yourself to be something you're completely not. To, to, to be someone you're completely not attached, to be attached to an ideology, a mindset, an idea that's quite frankly not you at all, and you're completely missing who you're meant to be. And I'm encouraging you today, and no matter what you're facing, you can do this. I'm encouraging you today that no matter what your situation is, that God is with you. That there's nothing you cannot face, nothing you cannot do. You are validated by the Lord. You are validated because God is valid and you are powerful. You are meant for signs and wonders. You are meant for exploits and you were meant for great things. It does not matter how you've been mislabeled. When you get a true revelation of how God sees you and how God's label you, you understand that you've been made different. You understand that you are not just enough. You are more than enough. And you have all that you need to be great and all that you need to be exactly who God has called you to be. So, so, so let's go ahead and look at Gideon because that simple encouragement that I just said, that's something Gideon needed. I mean, Gideon was someone who needed encouragement because of a situation. Literally, he was full of fear, moving funny, and lost. I mean, as we just read, Gideon was threshing wheat into a wine press. Now, that, that, that sounds a little weird because, well, it is weird. He was literally stuffing wheat, trying to hide wheat because of the Midianites who were coming to take their stuff into a wine press press. This is literally as cowardly as you can get in this moment. And in this moment, he lacks so much faith in himself. He lacks so much faith in the situation. He lacks so much faith, heck, possibly even in, in God. He just lacked everything he needs to really move accordingly, to move in power, to move in authority. In fact, he lacked so much faith that he couldn't even see, realize, comprehend, and do the first note and point that I want you to write down, and that note and point is this. When God speaks, believe Him. Quite simply, when God speaks, you need to believe Him. Let's look at these two verses from what we just read. This is Judges chapter 6, 12 and 13. It says this, The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. And Gideon responds like this. He says, Sir, if the Lord is with us, why is all this happening to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say the Lord brought us out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites? Here's, here's what's so interesting. The angel came down and, and gave him a label. The angel came down and called him a mighty hero. And later on, he goes on to say, well, that's not me. I'm like the weakest of the smallest of the smallest. And we're going to address that. Um, but, but, but this is part of the problem that we all face. A lot of times we're in a situation 
and, and, and things are rough, things are bad, the circumstance is what it is, and God literally shows up with the word that we need. God shows up to Gideon, calls him a mighty hero in the situation that he needs to be called a mighty hero, but the problem is he still couldn't believe it. The, the problem is he, he couldn't understand and couldn't comprehend and couldn't see himself as a mighty hero. In fact, what Gideon does is what a lot of us do. And instead of believing what God is trying to tell us, we remind God of our situation. We remind God of how bad the situation is. We remind God of, for, about how long we've been suffering, how, how long we, we've been missing out on, on certain opportunities. And we try to point out some form of impossibility, not realizing that we serve the God of the impossible, the God that turns all impossible into just a mere possibility that can easily get done. What we need to do is simply believe God when he speaks. When, when, when God sends you a man or woman of God to encourage you, when you're, when you're in a devotional, when you're reading the Word of God, and something's speaking into your situation, you need to believe what God is telling you. God will say to you straight up, He will send an angel of the Lord, He will send a man or woman of God, He'll, 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 he'll put the right circumstances in place, but listen, believe when He says but believe when he says it. Believe the things God is speaking over, the, over your life. What he calls you, what he tells you, especially in the situation when you're down, down or not, you just got to believe it. You, 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 you have to believe it. There's, there's two sides of that. And one, believe in what God speaks over you. And another side that's actually what I'm realizing is a whole lot more harder for people. You need to believe in yourself. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to let that marinate. You need to believe in yourself. Gideon couldn't do this. The angel said to him simply that the Lord is with you. Like, let's look at the scripture again. This is what it says. He says, mighty hero, the Lord is with you. He's talking to Gideon. And this is how Gideon responds. He says, sir, if the Lord is with us, whoa, us, the angel didn't say the Lord was with all of y'all. He said the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And the problem is that this is how a lot of people are. They, they don't think they're worthy. They don't think they qualify. They don't think that, that there's someone who deserves even God's help. Or they don't believe that there's someone who is worth God spending time with, God spending time on, God gracing, God opened the door. Gideon had a problem with seeing himself as a mighty hero. The angel said, God is with you. Well, if, 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 if the Lord is with all of us, why are you making this an us situation? One of the biggest issues is uh, um, this aspect of false humility, this aspect of false humility, which is pride, and also this, this lack of self-confidence that, 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 that people tend to have. Listen, if, if there's anything you, you, you hear right now, understand this, you are enough. You are enough. Everything you bring to the table is enough. Everything you bring to the table is all you need. Everything about you is good and great. There are no mistakes in your genetic makeup. There are no mistakes in the family you were born in. There are no mistakes in the place you live, the amount of money you make, the amount of siblings you have, the insecurities you have. Everything about you is enough and you need to start believing in yourself. If you do not believe in yourself, you won't be able to believe in the label God has for you. The angel called him a mighty hero, and Gideon was like, yeah, I don't know about that. You need to start believing in yourself. And, and, and what, what, where we're seeing this problem play out in life now, a lot of people, uh, they have so much faith and so much trust in God because he is God. And that's good, and that's great, and you need to have that. But, but you also need to develop a faith and trust in how God has made you and who you are, and everything about yourself. Listen, I'll ask you like this. If, if God believes in you, what's stopping you from believing in you? If God believes in you, what is stopping you from believing in you? It is great that God believes in you. It is great that, hey, maybe your parent believes in you, or maybe your spouse believes in you. Hey, listen, I believe in you, and that's really great that I believe in you, but 
if you do not get to the point where you start believing in yourself, you'll never be able to be the person God's called you to be. You'll never be able to move in faith that God like how God's called you to do. You'll never be able to fulfill the plans and purposes and the destiny that God has set out for you until you start believing what God says about you. Until you start looking at yourself as more than enough, than more than just some um, mere mortal, mere human, or, or someone who doesn't measure up to any type of status quo, or someone who just doesn't bring enough to the table. No, you are enough. It is time that you start believing in yourself. That was even the encouragement that the angel brought forth. Hey, listen, you're a mighty hero. <laughs> Get up. You are a mighty hero. Start being it. Start acting like it. You're a child of God. You are a chosen generation. You are someone who's made for signs and wonders for exploits. And I want you today to hear me, to look at me clearly as I tell you, you are enough. It doesn't matter how you feel about that statement, you are enough. You are great in the eyes of the Lord. God has placed so many things inside of you to really take over this world in, in, in a mighty way. And I'm not trying to just sell you nothing to, to make you feel good. No, I'm trying to encourage you out of that hole. I'm trying to encourage you out of believing so heavily in your insecurities that you, you don't move by faith. Believing that you have to be uh, uh, scaled back in any type of way. Believing that you, you have to keep your mouth shut. Believing that you shouldn't move to action. No, God believes in you. I believe in you. And it's time that you also begin to believe in yourself. It's extremely important. And it's what needs to happen. What needs to happen is you need to remove the label, man. Take this point down. Let go of the labels of limitation. Let go of the labels of limitation. Man, this is so big. I'm telling you, you have to let go of the label of limitation. A lot of people have been mislabeled. Mislabeled because, because of what people have said about you, because of the lies Satan has said to you. Heck, because of the things you believe about yourself. But I'm telling you now, it's time to let go, rip off, let loose yourself from the labels of limitation. And, and that's something that Gideon had to do. Look at these verses right here. Judges 6 from 14 to 15, it says this. Then the Lord turned to him and said, go in the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. Look what Gideon said. Look at the limitation he put on himself. He goes, but Lord... Um, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest of the whole tribe of Manasseh. I am the least in my entire family. And, and I am the least in my entire family. So, so, so let, me let me tell you what Gideon was saying here. First of all, Gideon came from out of the tribe of Manasseh. If you don't know, there are 12 tribes of Israel, but then there are two half-tribes. All right, Two half-tribes. I'll give you the whole story, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but, but think about full tribes, a half-tribe, and from this half-tribe of Manasseh, Gideon's clan, out of, out of all the clans, he comes from the smallest clan, and in the smallest clan is his family, which is the smallest family. And then he also concludes, out of my family, I'm the smallest one. So Gideon says, hey, God, listen, uh, you must not know who you're calling a mighty hero. You must not be able to read the label that's on my forehead. I am the smallest of the smallest of the smallest of the smallest of the smallest that we have here in Israel. It can't be me. How in the world are you sending me? How in the world can I have any type of purpose? Could there be any type of plan that you have for my life? That is what Gideon is saying here. And he labeled himself as small. You got to understand and let go of those labels of limitations. All right, Gideon believed that there was nothing that he could possibly do. He believed that there was nothing of greatness. There was no purpose. There was nothing mighty that could come from him because, well, let's face it. Um, He's, the, he's, he's the, the lowest status. In his opinion, in, in, in his opinion, he is so far at the bottom of the totem pole that there is no way he could be called for any type of great purpose. And that is a limitation that he put on himself. And I think that's so big for us to realize that you have to let go of any of these limitations. And the angel tried to help him. The angel said, hey, listen, go in the strength you have. Go in the strength you have. And Gideon goes, well, I'm, I'm the weakest of the weakest. You know what? Go weak. Go, go weak. That, that is actually the message the angel's trying to tell him. Hey, listen, go in the strength you have. Gideon says, I'm weak. Yeah, take your weakness. Take you into everything and, and go. Go just like that. Enough with 
the excuses. I, I, I need somebody to understand that. I need somebody to hear this right now. This is for somebody specific. Enough with the excuses. There are no excuses. Believe in who you are. Believe in everything God has given you. And go exactly how you are. There's nothing about who you are. There's nothing about the way he made you that has deemed you not enough for anything he's purposed you for. If you feel weak, go weak. If, if you feel tired, go tired. If you feel like you don't measure up, well, newsflash, you do, but go anyway. Go in the strength that God has given you. Because you have to understand, like, if, if, if God is sending you this message, he factored, he factored in exactly who he's talking to. He, he, he knows uh, how your situation looks, and that's exactly why he's telling you who exactly you are. So when he spoke to you, he knew exactly who he's talking to. The angel then speak to Gideon and, and, and think he was talking about Samson. He called him a mighty hero, and Gideon goes, hey, listen, I'm the weakest of the weakest. And he's like, oh, my bad, I was looking for Samson. No, he, he was talking to Gideon, and God is talking to you. He doesn't care how you look. He, he doesn't care how you dress. He's factored in how you look. He's factored in how you dress. He's factored in your family's history. He's factored in uh, your situation right now. He's factored in your financial situation. He's factored in your past. He's factored in your looks. He's factored in everything about you. He even factored in and saw what you did today and yesterday. And in regards of all that, his word over your life would not become void, especially and just because you find it hard to believe what he's saying about you. Begin to believe again. You match the word of the Lord over your life. I mean, that, that, that's a big encouragement for somebody. You match the word of the Lord over your life. Everything God has said about you, everything he's called to be, that is who you are. The label that he has for you is correct. Like, I, I can only imagine something being mislabeled. Like, I don't know, something... Something cheesy and corny, like if you were to mislabel uh, a jar of peanut butter and call it jelly, it wouldn't make sense, right? It wouldn't make sense. So, so, so for you to label yourself weak, for you to label yourself not enough, it's like this doesn't make sense. To, 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 because when, when we actually see who you are, we, we, we know that you measure up. When you actually get a view, a perspective of from heaven, you need to understand that God has created you for so much, man. And, and, and that's what I want to get into right now for you. I'm going to give you these three things, these th th three tips, three, uh, three, three practical actions, if you would say, to help you label yourself correctly, correctly, to help you realize even if you've been uh, mislabeled and, and to kind of retort that, okay? So the first one is this, understand God's opinion of your life. Understand God's opinion on your, of your life. Ephesians 2, chapter 10, 2, 2, verse 10 says this. Listen, this, 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 this is God's opinion. Plain and simple, I'm about to give you a verse that gives you God's opinion. Ephesians 2, 10 says this. For we are God's masterpiece. I don't, I don't even have to read anymore. I'm going to read it again. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he has planned us to do long ago. That's it. Understand your, your, your opinion, uh, God's opinion of you. Hey, you're his masterpiece. In fact, you need to get a heavenly perspective of who you are. You need to look at your life through heaven's eyes and understand that you have been made perfect. The label that's actually been placed on your life is masterpiece. Not, not enough, not small, not weak, not ugly, not, not frail, not never going to measure up, not never going to make enough money, not always going to be single, not, not the worst in your family, not the hate in your family, not the black sheep of your family. No, your label is masterpiece. And even think about a masterpiece that's, that's drawn. You were made in God's image. And every stroke that was made to make you was not by accident. In fact, every single stroke factors in to the perfection that you are, to the perfect image and picture that God has made you to be, to be that masterpiece made in his image for signs and wonders, created anew in Jesus Christ so you can do the good things that he has planned for you long ago. And listen, this is what you have to understand. You are a masterpiece right now. You are a masterpiece right now. In regards of how your weekend went, 
in regards to the things you did yesterday, heck, in regards to the things that you did today, in regards to how your, your, your week has been going, it, it, listen, it, it doesn't matter if it's been your day, your week, your month, or your year, all right, in moving in obedience or disobedience, you are God's masterpiece, period. Period. You are God's masterpiece, and you have to understand any other opinion outside God's opinion is not the opinion that you should be listening to. Any other opinion, uh, any other opinion outside you being God's masterpiece is not God's opinion. If it's not God's opinion, it don't matter. If it's your opinion of yourself that, that, that puts you at the pedestal that's less than what God has for you, doesn't matter. It could be the opinion of Satan. It could be the opinion of, of people in your life who are close to you. It could be uh, uh, the opinion of your coworkers, your friends, your boss, your family members, siblings, parents, whoever it is, spouse, does not matter. God's opinion, what God says about you, the label that God puts on you is who you are. You are God's masterpiece. Nothing more, because there is nothing more, and nothing less. Especially nothing less. You are God's masterpiece. That is the one thing you must always remember. Here's point number two. Discover God's plan for your life. Discover God's plan for your life. And I can literally, this whole point on its own, in fact, all three of these points are, are, are sermons in their own, right? Uh, maybe I'll expand these next three in these next three weeks. But this one right here, like, it's so full, so rich. Uh, you, discover God's plan for your life. Let's go back to that Ephesians 2.10. It says this, For we are God's masterpiece, and He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things He planned for us a long time ago. The beautiful thing about this verse, when you give your life to God, all of heaven rejoices. Why? Because, man, all of heaven understands and knows, man, God has great things planned for you. God, God, God has awesome things that He wants to do to you, for you, and through you. And, and God needs you to discover and understand the first and foremost that you're his masterpiece and you have worth and that he has so many great plans for you. And however God has made you is all you need to be. However he's designed you as a masterpiece, the moment you can accept yourself and all your insecurities and all your fears and all your doubts, accept that this is how God made me and he's made me perfect, the sooner you can walk into the plans and goals that he has for you. Look at this in Judges 6, verse 14 and 16, it says this, Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and rescue Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you. But, but, but Lord, Gideon replied, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest of the whole tribe in Manasseh. I'm the weakest of the weakest of the weakest of the weakest. We get it, Gideon. Look what God says in verse 16. Then the Lord said to him, I will be with you and you will destroy the Midianites as if you were fighting one man. I love the Bible, man. Look, look, look at how this uh, verse is, is constructed. The Lord said, I will be with you and then you will destroy the Midianites like you were facing one man. So because he is with you, the outcome of the story, one, is in your favor, and two, it's you winning and you getting even some glory for yourself as God is moving in your life. So the, the beautiful thing about what we see in these three verses is we see this all over the entire Bible. We see this all over the entire Bible. You have to understand this. However you are, however much you bring to the table, you have all you need. The strength that you have is the strength you need. What you bring is enough. And also remember and realize that God is with you, period. God is with you. That's exactly what he said. I will be with you because God has your back. Like I said, we see this all over the word. We saw this in Moses in Exodus chapter 3. The I am that I am God. We saw this in Genesis with Joseph. I mean, heck, we, we, we see this here again with Gideon. And we see this in my life and we see this in your life. All you need to do is realize. All you need to do is remember. All you need to do is rely on God. Why? Because God is with you. It's that plain and it's that simple. The problem is too many people are focused on them when God is with them. Too many people are focused on their own 
when they're forgetting that I am who I am and God is with me. That God covers the spread. That God covers the spread. You may have all those insecurities that's stopping you from believing in yourself or them doubts in your mind that stop you from believe, believing in who you are. But understand this, regardless of where you think you come up short, literally or physically, all right, God's grace is all you need. All right, look at how it's written in 2 Corinthians uh, verse 12, chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. This is Paul speaking. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness, in the insults, in the hardships, in the persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let me tell you the understanding here. Too many people are focused on their shortcomings, their insecurities, uh, um, uh, where they don't measure up, where they don't compare to someone else in, in the status quo or whatever it is, and forgetting that you have the grace of God on your life. It's a conversation that, that was had on one of these Zoom calls we had with, with the guys about um, someone's insecurity because they were short. And, and I won't go into the details of all that. But understanding it doesn't matter how, how tall you are, even if you're below six feet and, and, and people go after, um, or women are more attracted to it, go after men who are above six feet, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the grace is all you need. Go, go in the strength you have. In, in however way you measure up, be it mentally, physically, emotionally, financially, uh, emotion, whatever it is, God's grace is all you need. Don't be so focused on the thorn. Literally, that verse is telling you, hey, the great, my grace is all you need. So where you think you're weak, I cover that, all right? Where, in fact, where you, where, for where I am weak, then I'm made strong. So your weakness is your strong suit because God is covering your weakness. So understand, listen, you have all you need because you have God's grace. You have all you need because God is with you. You have all you need because it does not matter what area of life you feel that you don't measure up, don't measure up, God is there for you. Be more aware of his grace on your life. Be more aware of his presence. Be more aware of what he brings to the table than what you bring to the table because you are labeled his masterpiece. And even with that, he is standing there with you in every trial, in every tribulation, in every moment, in every doubt or fear or circumstance or anything, God is with you. And you can go in the strength that you have fully knowing that His grace is also there and His grace is all that you need. Period. Here's the third and final point. When Satan presses you, press back. When Satan presses you, press back. Literally, this could have been the only thing I told you. This could have been the only thing I told you because this is so big because Satan is the one that's going to try to mislabel you. Satan is, is the one that's going to try and lie to you. Satan is the one who literally moves quickly and is so quick to question your identity. Satan is so quick. He wants to question your identity in each and every single way. He did the Jesus Christ. So if he did the Jesus He'll do to, to he'll do to me and he'll do to you. Look at what it says here in Luke chapter four, verses one to three. It says this: Then Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned to the Jordan River. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he was tempted by the devil for forty days. Jesus ate nothing all the time and became very hungry. Verse three. Then the devil said to him, "If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to become a loaf of bread." I'm sorry. What? If. If. If, if you are the Son of God, no, you know exactly who he is. That's big homie Jesus Christ. Like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, see, see how Satan came for his identity? Hey, listen, if you are Jesus, if you are this oh so holy, mighty person who's actually supposed to come and save, if you're not just some other fake prophet who's claiming to be the Messiah, if you are who you say you are, do this. And the exact same way that he attacked Jesus Christ, Satan will attack your identity. He will question if if you're really worth it, if you really measure up, if you're really the person you say you can be, if you're really the person God says you are, if you're really the person who, who, will, who will be meant for signs and wonders, who can be successful, who can change the scope of your family, who can change the, uh, the, the scope of relationships, who, who, can, who can change the, a certain career demographic, Satan will question your identity 24-7, but you have to press back. 
He's always going to question it. He's always going to uh, press on it. Right? He's always going to try and make you feel that you aren't who God says you are. If. If. When Satan gives you that if, you have to press back. And you have to do it exactly how Christ does it. With the word of the Lord. With the word of the Lord, you have to know your word. You have to know your Bible. This is why I give you so much scripture every week. With, with the exception of last week when we went strictly off Humpty Dumpty, all right, and no scriptures, I give you so much scripture because you need to know the, know the word of the Lord over your life. You know what God says about you in his text, through his prophetic men and women of God, all right, and in uh, your life and in prayer personally, take what God says about you, every way he tries to label you, as enough, as signs and wonders, as a masterpiece, and go with that. Because Satan is going to question it. He's going to challenge it. He's going to try to attack you in that area. And when he presses, you must press back. So know your identity. And what is your identity? I'll read to you one more time. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says this. For we are God's masterpiece. For we are God's masterpiece. Hey, you, you're God's masterpiece. Regardless of what you did today that made you feel like you weren't, you're his masterpiece. Regardless of the family you come from, how you look, how tall you are, the color of your skin, how much money you make, the relationship you don't have, you are God's masterpiece. And you are not labeled by anything else less than that. And you should always go in the strength you have and know that his grace is all that you need. So I want us to pray right now that we begin to believe what God says about us. We begin to believe in ourselves. We begin to believe the word of God on our life and that we attack the voices that's telling us otherwise and begin to label ourselves as God labels us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for your power and your might. I thank you for everyone who's listening and watching right now. We praise you and we thank you because of what you say about us. God, we decree and declare in this moment that we believe you. We believe the word of the Lord over our life, the words that have been spoken over us. God, we believe what you say about us. We believe that we are enough. We believe that we are a chosen generation, that we are a royal priesthood. God, we believe that we are a masterpiece. We come against any false label. Any false label to tell us that we aren't enough, that we don't measure up, that where we come from isn't good enough, God, that how much they're making is not good enough. We decree and declare, God, that what you say about us is who we stand as, is our identity. We decree that we are your masterpiece. God, right now, I come against any attack of Satan to attack the young minds of anyone who's watching right now. God, we take control of our minds right now in Jesus' name. We uproot any seed of deception, any seed of lies planted in the minds of anyone who's watching right now. God, we just decree and declare that there is faith, faith to believe in themselves, God, in the name of Jesus, faith to believe how you made them, how you designed them to be, Father, in Jesus' name, God, we just pray that you pour out more grace. Pour out more grace on us, God, where we feel like we don't measure up, where we feel that we are weak. And we thank you because even those areas where we may be weak, your grace makes us strong, Father. And your grace is all that we need. We thank you, King of glory. We thank you, mighty God. For in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. And hey, listen. If you are listening, watch right now, and, and you feel mislabeled, but especially if you're not labeled as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a son or daughter of God, I want you to pray this salvation prayer with me. It's time to label yourself as a Christian. It's time to label yourself as a masterpiece, chosen, who somebody that God has so many plans for. So go ahead, if you want to do that for the first time, or if you want to rededicate your life, repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die for me on the cross. I accept him as my Lord and personal Savior. Jesus, come into my heart and fill me with your spirit and let my life change forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, somebody. Have you been blessed today? by the Lord's message. Hey, listen, go ahead and like the video and share. If you just prayed that last prayer, congratulations. All right, go ahead and text SAVED, that's S-A-V-E-D, 
to 718-312-2253. I'll say it again. Text SAVE, uh, that's S-A-V-E-D, to 718-312-2253. Okay, that is it for you, man. I hope you've been blessed by God's word. Go ahead and share the gospel with somebody. Go ahead and just know and declare that you are a master, please. Rip off any label that you're not enough, that you ain't good enough, that you can't measure up. All right, rip those off because they don't even allow you to walk and move in full power. Man, I think I'm a, there's more to talk about this. Maybe next week, maybe last, next week. But understand this, you are God's masterpiece. And remember, it is your story for his glory. Mm -hmm.